This is the five minute sample for Robert's Rules of Order, a complete guide to Robert's Rules of Order by Richard Mills. This is my 20th audiobook, and it was released on April 26th, 2020, though it was completed in January of the same year. I'm not sure why it took so long for this title to go to retail, as it never came back for any changes. I suppose it may have been due to the coronavirus outbreak, or maybe it was just a low priority selection. Anyways, I had a blast doing this one. It offers organizational guidance for big, professional organizations, and even for local, more personal organizations. You can apply all of the rules of order to your situation, though I found that utilizing even just a few of them can be helpful in scheduling out an organization. This isn't the first book to document Robert's rules of order, but it does so in a rather succinct way, clocking in at just under three hours. Reading this book got me thinking about the times that I was involved in organizational activities. I wish I had known about the rules of order when I was younger. When I was in high school, I was the vice president of our comedy club. Here's a picture of our poster. The first few meetings went well. There was a large attendance, and the members themselves were pitching meeting ideas. The Facebook group was even active, with people sharing videos and having discussions. But after that, the club completely fell through. The president stopped showing up, and when he did, all of his friends who made up the bulk of the club stopped showing up as well. Looking through the old Facebook group as I type up the script to this video, I really did try to keep everyone engaged. But I simply didn't have a good knowledge basis to retain interest or plan out productive meetings, especially by myself. Eventually, I started to just ask my friends who weren't even in the club to have lunch in the meeting spot on Tuesdays, and we'd sit there and eat. (laughs) So it became more of a lunch club than a comedy club. I was honestly relieved that the club died out. To be honest, I'd never really wanted to run the club by myself to begin with, and I'd only agreed to be the vice president because I was friends with a lot of the people there, and I liked the idea. I can't help but think if I had done some research on something like Robert's Rules of Order, or any kind of organizational methods, that the club could have at least survived. (laughs) I would get this audiobook, or a similar audiobook that covers the same material, if you're in a similar situation, or you know someone who is, or is thinking of starting an organization. You can't be too careful, right? (laughs) I hope you enjoy this five-minute sample. This book aims to serve as a comprehensive guide to parliamentary procedures, as outlined in Robert's Rules of Order, and how to implement such rules and structure to your own organization. Robert's Rules of Order have been used for decades to enhance the productivity and efficiency of meetings. In addition, the implementation of Robert's Rules of Order helps to ensure that fairness and democracy is ever-present in the organizations that choose to use this system. Robert's Rules of Order are applicable to a huge variety of organizations, from small, community-led groups to large, publicly traded companies. Robert's Rules has been used successfully by all matters of organizations for decades. Once again, thanks for choosing this audiobook. I hope you find it to be helpful. Chapter 1. An Overview of Robert's Rules of Order Certain principles and procedures are considered universal when it comes to the process of making decisions. These may apply for simple personal matters, such as whenever your family is deciding on where to go for the upcoming holidays. A similar decision-making process can also be applied in a business or any organizational setting. For example, Facilitating a meeting among the team members would require, at a certain point, for the group to come to an agreement on how to proceed regarding a particular issue. The principles and procedures that are applied during these meetings are collectively known as parliamentary procedures. In the most basic sense, parliamentary procedures have been designed to govern how a decision will be made in any type of setting. In the most basic sense, Parliamentary procedures have been designed to govern how a decision will be made in any type of setting. By following the standards and guidelines stated in the parliamentary procedures, every party involved can expect that order and fairness will be upheld throughout the course of the process. To ensure the proper implementation of parliamentary procedures, 
Robert's Rules of Order was written and presented as a manual of consolidated principles and processes. Due to the extensiveness of the topics covered, the manual has been recognized by a wide range of organizations and experts from different fields of interests. Basic Elements of Robert's Rules of Order Understanding how to use and apply the contents of the manual entails learning about its different parts. Robert's Rules of Order was designed as a comprehensive guide for anyone who wishes to improve how their meetings are being run and how decisions are being made by the group he or she belongs to. Given its thoroughness, it can be daunting for beginners to navigate the manual, especially when they need to find a certain topic or standard that is applicable to their current situation. As a prerequisite for the successful application of Robert's Rules of Order, it is necessary for all leaders and members of a group to have a copy of the manual. Hard copies are available in almost all libraries, as well as all major bookstores. If you would rather read an electronic copy of it, there are free online versions of the previous editions, which may also sufficiently serve as a reference while you are trying to master the parliamentary procedures. Motions and Voting There are several sections of the manual, but the most in-depth one is all about making motions during a meeting. There are four general types of motions that a member can execute depending on their intention. Main or Principal Motion This pertains to a statement made by a member of the organization in order to propose an action or present an opinion for the evaluation and approval of the assembly. All main motions require a second before they can be opened up for debate. For it to be adopted, the motion must gain the majority vote, or the two-thirds vote, depending on what is stated in the organization's bylaws. Once it has been passed, the organization is allowed to propose amendments to the said motion, but these motions will have to go through the same process of review and approval. When a member is making a main motion, no member is allowed to interrupt the one who has taken the floor. In order to prevent any confusion or miscommunication among the members of the assembly, it's best to include as many details as possible into the statement. Privileged Motions The main point of privileged motions is to get the attention of the assembly on matters that concern the rights of the members. Even if there is an ongoing or pending discussion, debate, or vote, a privileged motion will take precedence over any other motion that has been made and recognized by the assembly. A link to purchase Robert's Rules of Order is in the description below. This title was a pay-for-hour production, so I do not make money from any purchases. Thanks for listening!